Hey everyone, what's up? This is Dr. Charlie Johnson, physical therapist. And after working with just over 10,000 people who have a pain in the butt, I've learned a few things. And so I'm constantly asked by people, Dr. Charlie, if you had to pick, people always want to pigeonhole me into an answer here. If you had to pick, what is the single best exercise that you would recommend to relieve piriformis syndrome and or a pain in the butt? <laughs> And so I wanna share with you in today's video what I have found to be the most valuable exercise for people I've worked with, as well as many others throughout the years. Plus, I wanna let you in on when you should do it, how you should do it, and you know how to know if it's the right exercise for you. And so I wanna share my logic and sort of the reason why behind I would recommend doing this exercise so you can determine if it's the best thing for you. And if you're still unsure as to what's causing the source of your symptoms, be sure to check out my DIY diagnostic guide. You can download it by clicking the link above. Also check it out in the pinned comments below. All right, so first, before we even do this exercise, this is super important. Do not skip this step. What I want you to do first is find a movement or an activity that bothers you, something that bothers your symptoms, something that increases or reproduces the pain that you're experiencing. Perhaps it's moving your leg in a certain way, doing the figure four stretch you've been told to do, but it's just not working, right? Maybe it's walking or climbing the stairs. It could be anything. And whatever it is, I just want you to do it once or twice or for a short amount of time and sort of take a mental snapshot of what it feels like when you do that activity that causes you pain. How bad does it hurt? Where does it hurt? Just what does it feel like? And kind of collect the baseline. And once you've done that, now it is time for treatment. It is time to test to see if this exercise is something that's going to be useful for you and or not. Uh, and we're going to do that using movement as medicine. So let me show you the exercise. And real fast, this exercise will make your buttock muscles tired, right? Uh, but it should not be painful. If it is, don't do it. You'll have to find a different exercise to use as medicine. Also, if your hip on the painful side is super stiff, like this. Yeah, let's do the good side first. All right. Boom. Feels great. No problem. Complete yeah. flexibility. Yep. Right side. Ugh. Okay, that's just... Naturally, I mean, I can push it down, but it hurts. It's really tight. And your knee is sticking straight up in the air and or you just have a significantly restricted motion. Then you simply won't have the range of motion to perform the exercise effectively. And therefore, I would not recommend it for you. All right, so here's what you're gonna do to perform the figure four strength in the most optimal way to get the most bang for your buck and work the muscle that you want to work, which is the piriformis muscle or just the muscles deep in the buttock. So what you wanna do is you want to lay with your pain-free side, that is the side that does not hurt, down on the table, or if you don't have a table like this, just lay on the floor, all right? Um, and what you're gonna do is have the pain-free side down, the painful side up. You are going to have your feet stacked so your heels together and just be laying on your side. You can put your arm up so you're not laying straight on your shoulder. And picture as though I'm the wall. So I have the stick and basically you would want your heels, your butt, and your back or your shoulders to kind of all be in alignment from sort of a bird's eye view. So if your feet or your knees are up there, that's not gonna work really well. It's gonna be super awkward and just not target exactly what we want to target. So bring it back, everything in a straight line here. And what I would recommend first, so this way we can monitor kind of one of the fatal flaws, which is you rolling backwards, is take your hand, put it on your hip, whether it be like this or like this, I don't care. Um, and then what you're gonna do is keeping your heels together, you are slowly going to spread your legs apart and raise this up towards the ceiling. So go ahead and do that. Great, now, if she goes higher, watch what happens. See how she rolls backwards. Eh, don't do that, okay? So you wanna be like this, open up as high as it can or as high as you can, and there's a tipping point, if you will. If she goes any further, she starts to roll backwards. If she doesn't uh, you know, go to that extent, then she's really not maximizing the range of motion, and therefore she's not bringing the muscle into the most shortened position possible. So hands are on the hips just to prevent you from rolling backwards. You can go more than that, so get it on up. A little bit more, right there, and stay rolled forward slightly a little bit more. Hold it right there. And so you would hold this three reps until tired. So she should feel some burn in her buttock. Okay. And so she's gonna hold that until she gets tired, not like failure to where she's like screaming or doing something <laughs> funky like that. All right, she's doing a good job for the camera, but just until she gets tired, then she's going to rest. How long do you rest? There's no exact science. Maybe take a moment or two, right? 30 seconds, whatever. Just kind of like get some juice back in the hip and then do the same thing again. Hold it right there, good job, not rolling. You'll feel burning in the hip. That's exactly what you want to experience. Again, this should not be painful. And do it again. One last time, miss. 
Great job. Keep up the good work. <laughs> and let it down. Now here's how you can tell if this exercise worked for you and is right for you or not. So what I want you to do is immediately get on up after doing what I just showed you and retest the yucky movement or activity that bothered you just a few moments ago. And what I want you to ask yourself is, do things feel same, better, or worse? So let's just say you had trouble going up the steps because it caused a pain in the butt. Well, you just did the exercise. And so now you would stand on up, you would head over to the stairs and try the stairs again. And if it's better, you're done. The exercise helps you, and I would generally recommend three holds of this figure four strength motion until tired two times daily to start. But let's just say that you're worse now. Maybe you're hobbling up the stairs or something funky happened. Number one, I'm sorry, but number two, it happens when you're testing things. This is why I recommend to never do things that are painful. That being said, right, if it made you worse immediately after doing it, then guess what? It doesn't help, and you've got to find another motion. If climbing the stairs is no better, right, then holds didn't help. But let's try it a slightly different way before we just ditch it and say, Charlie, this can't work for me. So let's tweak it. Meaning go try the figure four strength or clamshell exercise, but in a slightly different way. In this case, I would recommend that you try repetitions instead of holds. So same position and setup, but slowly open this time and close repetitions, right? Pause for a second at the top and perform three sets of reps until you're tired. No rolling, no rolling. So now you just performed the same clamshell or figure four strength exercise, but in a slightly different way. You tweaked it. Instead of doing holds, you did reps. So now get up and try these stairs again and see if reps helps you when maybe holds didn't. If now things are better, right? For whatever reason, your body likes repetitions more. I can't tell you why, but you know, who cares? I'd recommend that you do three sets of reps until you're tired twice a day to start. If things are still the same or worse, meaning, you know, your ability to go up and down the stairs is no better. You still feel the same amount of pain in the same spot uh, and or things are worse, then just don't waste your time with this exercise. Why? Because it either didn't help or change what you experienced and or it made things worse. And we don't really want to do that. So to summarize, here's what we just did. We found a yucky motion or activity, something that hurts. And we took a mental snapshot of what it felt like when we were doing that thing. Then we treated using movement as medicine, right? Using the figure four strength or clamshell exercise. And then we retested. We went back to that yucky motion or activity to see what happened. Then we followed some basic logic. If it got better, right? The exercise seems to help. And I'd recommend that you do it at home and you give it a try. If there was no change, then I recommended that you tweaked it. Instead of trying holds, you try it in a slightly different way. You do reps and then you retest the yucky activity or motion to see if they helped. And if by going through this process, you found that this exercise just makes things worse, then just stop. Don't do it. We need to find another motion. And so hopefully that makes sense. If not, just comment below, right? Or go back, kind of slow me down and rewatch. So now that you've seen the exercise and figure out if it's something that is, you know, likely to help you and or not, I want to just take one moment to share my logic behind why I think it helps so many people. Now, honestly, it's kind of silly and very elementary, but you know, maybe I'm not that smart or maybe I'm just super logical. Either way, I'll share it for you anyways, and you can be the judge. So really, there are just two things that can be done to any tissue in the body, right? In the case of true piriformis syndrome, if that's actually what you have, we are talking about a muscle because the piriformis is a muscle in the body. And you can either lengthen, so point A and point B, you can either lengthen a muscle in your body and or you can shorten it. You can bring things closer together. And years back when I came out of school, we were taught to prescribe stretches or lengthening exercises, if you want to call it that, to folks who thought they had piriformis syndrome. We would stretch it and pull it in all kinds of different positions or angles. And you know what these stretches are because everyone's recommended you to do them. Think of like nerve glides, figure four stretches, pigeon pose, things like that. And truthfully, these are just cookie cutter treatments for piriformis syndrome that are outdated. And what do you know? I found that they just didn't work that well. In fact, they made most people feel worse. So I began to challenge what I had learned and ask myself these three questions. Hmm. So if lengthening makes most people worse, what is the opposite of worse? Better. And what's the opposite of lengthening, shortening or contracting a muscle, bringing the two points closer together. And so I thought if most people are trying to lengthen their buttock muscles through the classic or traditional figure four stretch like this. All right, folks. So just imagine that this, Butterfly, this blue butterfly is the piriformis muscle. And when you do a classic figure four stretch, you can see how it just spreads its wings and it grows. 
and really not that much. But the idea is you can imagine that if this were a muscle in the buttock, it would be lengthened. And it's not working, then why not just do the opposite? Perhaps that will work. By contracting the muscle in that figure four strength position, we're actually creating slack in that area, which is the opposite, again, of what the figure four stretch does. When you shorten that muscle, go ahead and do it, you can actually see that it brings the tissue closer together. So it's not lengthening it, it's actually bringing it closer together. It's sort of having the butterfly fold its wings, right? And there's more slack within the system. Ever since I've taken this anti-stretch or shortening approach, it's proven to be much more successful. Now, of course, there are folks who might respond to traditional stretching and foam rolling and deep tissue and all of those things. In my experience, what people perceive to be tightness in the buttock is either caused by A, not a buttock problem at all, so it's referred pain from somewhere else, or B, due to a muscle that is not really tight, but instead is fatigued and or overworked. Hence why when we increase the strength or endurance of the area via this figure four strength or clamshell maneuver, you'll see that the tightness resolves and the pain diminishes. All right, so there you have it. Here's a quick recap. Remember, first things first, this exercise should not be painful. It should feel safe. And if you're super stiff in the hip, chances are you've got something else going on, hip osteoarthritis or something in the hip joint. And you will not be able to perform this exercise adequately because you just don't have enough motion. And the process of seeing if this exercise works for you is pretty straightforward. You find a yucky motion, something that hurts or doesn't feel good. Then you use a yummy motion, in this case, the figure four strength. And then you see if that fixes the yucky motion. And ideally you see an immediate change in your ability to move for the better. And this is all based off the logic that if you've tried stretching and it hasn't worked, well, the opposite of stretching or lengthening something is to shorten or contract it. And the opposite of not working is working. So this often helps. Oh, and final tip, if you do find that this exercise helps, please do not mix this with other things. Stay scientific and stay focused on what you truly know works. So that's all I got for this video. Hopefully this was valuable. Let me know in the comments below what you thought, what your response was to doing this, uh, and sort of what you learned. And please be sure to like as well as uh, hit the subscribe button and the bell for notifications when I go live with new videos every single week. And again, to wrap this up, be sure to click the link in the pinned comments or the description below and download a free copy of my DIY Diagnostic Guide.